Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, Hollywood. Broadway Review this week with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy takes you to Hollywood. Hollywood, Hollywood, you nestle in the land of milk and honey. We love your oil wells, gushing oil. We love your rich and fertile soil. We grow fine potatoes and very fine tomatoes. We sure cultivate those. Beautiful tomatoes, but next to agriculture, we're vultures for some culture, and so we also make movies. Our orchards are weedless, our oranges are seedless, our pictures are pointless, some of them are needless. But next to growing peaches, we love our double features, and so we also make movies. Fruits, we pack them. Films. We can them. The critics look them over. We can them. They pan them. Apart from things rural, we love things extramural. A film star, exotic, and heroines erotic. The greater the neuroses, the bigger are the grosses. Domestic wines and liquors, we make as well as flickers. Our aim is altruistic, our medium artistic. And so, we also make movies.
no boss. I don't want you fooling around with my girl, see? Just because we work for you. Just because she's a stenographer and I'm the head shipper in your office. That don't mean we ain't got no feelings. She's my girl, see, and I want you to stay away from her. My dear man, she is old enough to know who she wants to go out with. She didn't have to go out with me if she didn't want to. Yeah, you blinded her with your money, you low-down, no-good playboy. I'm on to your tricks. You took her to swanky places, to nightclubs, to country clubs. You spoiled her. Now she ain't satisfied just to go to a movie with me. Am I right? Uh-huh. Good man, you shouldn't have done that. You've got to learn to control yourself in these days of civilized society. Yes, yeah, society's a smiley. Don't you think I got plans? Don't you think I got dreams? I love this kid. I got plans for us. A little house in the country. Cut, I can cut, see it. But Henry, you haven't quite got the right feeling. Now, this is this is a crucial point in your life. All your hopes, fears, and dreams are wrapped up in this girl. When you think of losing her, something happens to you inside. See what I mean? Yes, I think I see what you mean. I'm kind of desperate. Desperate and at the same time afraid. Okay? Okay. Take it from the slap. <laughs> <laughs> Young man, you shouldn't have done that. You've got to realize to control yourself in these days of civilized society. Yeah, society, so smiley. Don't you think I got dreams? I love this kid. I got plans for us. A little house in the country. I can see it now. It'll have a little picket fence cut, around it. Cut, cut, Henry, I didn't see the little house in the country. Where is it? You see, even you don't know. Now visualize it, visualize it. We've got to see it. It's a beautiful little place, and he's going to take it away from you. Take it from the slap. <laughs> Young man, you must learn to control yourself in these days of civilized society. Yeah, society, a society. Don't you think I got dreams? I love this kid. I got plans for us. A little house in the country. I can see it now. It'll have a little big fence around it. And it'll be ours, you understand? Ours. Henry, I still didn't see the little house in the country. You've got to see it. You've got to make me see it. Okay. Take it from the slap. <laughs> Young man, you must realize you've got to control yourself in these days of civilized society. Yeah, society, society, society. Don't you think I got dreams? I love this kid. I got plans for us. A little house in the country. I can see it now. It'll have a little picket fence around it. And it'll cut, be ours, cut, you understand? Ours! I still didn't see the house. Didn't see the house. I didn't see the house. I didn't see the house. You've got to make me see the house. Take it from the slap. <laughs> Young man, you're... <laughs> Young man, you've got to realize you've got to control yourself in these days in civilized society. Man, society's a smiety. Don't you think I got dreams? I love this kid. And I got plans for us. A little house in the country. I can see it now. I see the house. I'm taking pictures of it. And it'll be ours. I see the house. It'll be ours. There's the house. There's the house. There's the house right over there. What a joint. There's the house. You see the house? Yeah, I see the house. Good. He thought but I can't see the fence. Can't see the fence. Take it from the slap. You got good eyes. Yeah, take it from the slap. <laughs> Young man, you my bro. Young man, you must learn to control yourself in these days of civilized society. Hey, society, society. Don't you think I got dreams? I love this kid, and I got plans for us. A little house in the country. I can see it now. It'll be ours, do you understand? A little yeah. picket fence around it. It's going to belong to us. It's the green grass now. Sadie, count the pickets. One, two, three. In the gate. Out of the gate. There you are. You see the pickets? There it is. There's the fence. I oh. see the fence. Yeah, good. But now the house is blown. The house is blown. <laughs> I'm going to make you see the house. Yeah. Can't see the house, huh? Take it from the slap. Uh-huh. How's it now? It's getting a little better. Good. Take it from the slap. Uh-huh. Are uh -huh. oh, you getting clearer? Oh, that's getting clearer. It's getting a little clearer. Take it from the slap. Uh-huh. Hey, huh? Hey, uh -huh. You'll see the numbers pretty soon. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. Oh! You'll see the numbers. Well, that's movie making, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of making movies, I'm sure you have all seen the movie where the young, newly married couple goes out searching for furniture for their little knot nest. Well, Marge and Gower Champion find themselves in such a situation as we find them now searching for a new parlor chair.
Darling, Mary McCarty, on stage number nine for the happy medium scene. Are there any spirits present? Yes. Will you appear for me tonight? Uh-huh. If you're in search of spirits, then I'm the girl who has them. Come with me, run barefoot through fields of ectoplasm. In my little spirit home, the spirits all attend me. Nero tells me tales of Rome, and Jack the Ripper's friendly. At my seance, spirits fly, come in one night and see. If you're alive, the price is high. But if you're dead, it's absolutely free. just to calm my nerves. I can't, my shroud's not back from the cleaners yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, spirit, spirit. Hello, Jeeves. Is there anyone here to see me? <laughs> Who? I didn't expect you so soon. Tell her I'll be with her in a minute. I want to put in a placement. Very important that I get ready. That's my powers. Uh... <laughs> Hit center. Are there any spirits present? Are there any Indian spirits present? <laughs> Give me a sign. <laughs> I would like to speak, please, to my chief control, Chief Find the Face. Chief Find the Face, are you here? If you are, say so. Bad connection. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I want to speak to Chief Find the Face. He's not here? Who is this? Sitting Bull. You're standing in for him, huh? <laughs> Listen, will you tell him I call? Okay, thanks a lot. I'm pretty hot tonight. I think I should see this one. Ready. Bring her in, please. Bring in Mrs. Jones. Ah. Spirits. Spirits all about me. Spirits everywhere I go. I feel the spirits tonight. Ah! <laughs> What's the matter? Live people always frighten me. Oh. Now listen, I've got to hypnotize you into a state so that you can receive all of the various spirits that will be near you tonight. You are going to sleep. You are going to fall asleep. You've been very tired for a long time. <laughs> You're getting very sleepy, see? You're getting awfully sleepy. You're falling asleep. Madam? Madam? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I never quite got the hang of that. Won't you sit down, please? <laughs> now, who is it that you want to speak to in the other world? Herbert. Herbert. I want to contact Herbert. Herbert! Are you here? He's near. What do you want to know? Is Herbert happy? Her Herbert, are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. But Herbert was a dog. A dog? He's probably a talking dog in this life. You never know. Who oh. else would you like to speak to? Uh, Lulu Bell. Lulu Bell. Uh, how would you like to have Lulu Bell write you a spirit message on that a slate? Would, would you like that? Oh, I'd love what it. What would you like to ask Lulu Bell? Well, is there anything I can do for her? All right. Want to contact Lulu Bell? 
Please answer Mrs. Jones's question on the slate. Is there anything Mrs. Jones can do for you, Lulu Bell? Aha. Uh -huh. Now lift up your hands toward heaven and receive the message that Lulu Bell has written especially for you. Now, my dear Mrs. Jones, tell me, what does the spirit message say? It says, pay the medium five dollars. Love that, Lulu Bell. <laughs> Give me my money. No, no, I'm sorry, I won't pay you the five dollars. Why not? The spirits have spoken. I'm not going to pay you the five dollars until I receive a manifestation. A manifestation? You mean a tangible contact with someone from the other world? Yes, yes, I do. That's impossible. However, I'll try. I'll put in a placement to Chief Pie in the face. Mm -hmm. Chief Pie in the face. Are you here? Are you anywhere about? If you are, make me know it. <laughs> Caesar and Mary McCarty on stage number five for Mother War Britches. Who's your little what's it? Who's the one who struts it? 
down the avenue with you. Oh, come on and tell me who. Who's your sunny sky? Your coffee and your apple pie. Oh, who's the lucky fella? Who's your umbrella? When there is a heavy dew. Who's your little? How's your little? You know what? How's your little? What's it do? Who's your favorite recipe? Who's your stick of tea and tea? Betty? Yes, Dan? Ah, baby. Yes, that's not like the old days in the chorus, huh? You're with me, Dan Patter. Yes, sir, you're in a big time, baby. And I got your name on the boards right up alongside of mine. Dan Patter and Company. Yes, uh, honey. You stick with me and the sky's the limit. Sure. What do you say we go out and do to town tonight? Sure, a couple of hamburgers and then maybe a movie. Oh, Dan, it's all so wonderful. <laughs> it would be all so perfect if, if. If what? If, 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 if we were married. Oh, sure, honey. Any time you say. Golly, for a minute there, I thought you were gonna ask for cop Billy. Pittsburgh. Who's your little what's it? Who's the one who shuts it? When you leave the door ajar. Who's the strings on your guitar? Ready? Yes, Dan. <clears throat> did I see somebody deliver a telegram to you just before? Well, uh, I guess you did. Who's it from? Well, uh, it was from Mr. Ziegfeld. Ziegfeld? Ziegfeld, honey, why don't you tell me before? Baby, don't you know what that means? It means we're in the big time. Yeah, the big time, honey. He wants our act. He, 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 he. What did he say? Oh, what difference does it make? That's what I thought. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't want the act. He wants you alone. That's it. Isn't it? <laughs> sure, I, I can tell you just what he said. I got a great party in my new show, kid. But I can't use the boy. Well, that's show business. <laughs> Sure. Honey, don't worry about me. It's your big chance. You've got a board boy. Your name and lights. <laughs> don't worry about me. I'll, I'll, get a, I'll get a new girl and start breaking a new act right away. But, Dan, <coughs> I'm not going to leave you. It's you and me together or nothing at all, Dan. What? I'm not going to break up the act, Dan. What do you mean you're not going to break up the act? Now, you go out there and be a star, you understand? Go ahead. Do what I tell you. I won't do it. Now, come on, you go out there and be a star and do what I tell you, you understand? I won't break up the act, Dan. <laughs> okay, you talk me in. Cleveland. Who's your little what's it? Who's the one who wants it? When your cigarette goes on. Who's your little sour crowd? Betty? Yes, Dan. Ah, baby, things couldn't be better. Ah, I will book solid right through Jack. I think we will have to cancel a few engagements. What do you mean cancel a few engagements, honey? We're just going great. Hey, hey. You mean? <laughs> honey, why don't you tell me before? Pull up a trunk and sit down or something, honey. <laughs> Wait a minute, baby. From now on, you're going to take it nice and easy. Yes, sir. From now on, you take it nice and easy. Boston. Who's your little watch Who's the one who starts it? Philadelphia. Telegram for Dan Patter. Twins! Years later. Yes, Betty. I can't go on in the act any longer. After all, I am a mother. And when I think of the twins way out there in Memphis with no one to watch out for them, I don't know what to do. What can the twins say when people ask them what their mother does? All they can say is, mother wears grease paint. So what's, uh, what's, what's, what's wrong with that? It's greasy. <laughs> ah, the twins, the twins. That's all I hear about is the twins. I should have known never to count on you. Five, ten, twenty years. And then you get tired. <laughs> sure. I should have never knew you. You could never stick to anything. Oh, Dan, you will never understand, Dan. Sure, go ahead. Walk out of me. Go back to the twins. Don't worry about me at all. I'll do a single. Milwaukee. Hey, what's the difference? Kansas City. Rochester.
Hey, Sam boy! Oh, go ahead. Pray for me. But it ain't my... It's not my feet that's right. It's something right in here. I can't... I can't tell you what it is. It'd be all right if only Betty would come back. Betty! If that, Betty, I, I can't believe it. But it's true. She's here. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> came back. Oh, honey, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you too, Dan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to know that the, the team of Dan Patter and company is back together again. And with a little encouragement from the audience, we'll do our old act. Won't we, honey? <laughs> Strike it up, my snow. Who's your little watch it? Who's the one who shots it? Down the avenue with you. Who's your little, how's your little? Little, sweet sixteen. In your motor car, who is the gasoline? Who's your little watch who? Who's your little watch who? Calling Dr. Willoughby on stage number seven for men in white. Boy, what a head I've got. I can hardly keep my eyes open. You'd better hurry. Dr. Willoughby doesn't like to be kept waiting. Oh, is this Dr. Willoughby's case? Yes, gallbladder. Oh, boy, what a head I've got. I can hardly keep my eyes open. <laughs> well, is everything ready? The chief will be here in a minute. Yes, are you assisting Dr. Willoughby? Yes, blast it. Oh, oh and what a head I've got. I can hardly keep my eyes open. <laughs> Hey, I don't like this. Everybody's got a hangover. Now, lie still and stop worrying. Yes, don't worry. Dr. Willoughby does all the operating around here. Here comes the doctor now. <laughs> oh, boy, what a head I've got. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Nurse, where's my patient? Oh, there you are, my man. You're looking on. Nurse, why is the patient standing up here? It's ridiculous not to have Dr. a man Willoughby. on the operating table for you. Dr. Willoughby. Oh, uh, this is the patient. Oh, so it is. So it is. What seems to be the trouble, my man? <laughs> but you told me you knew. Oh, so I did, so I did. Something about an operation, wasn't it? Well, we'll get right to work. Have you any last requests to make? Any messages for your relatives? Hey, what is this? Now, don't get excited. Dr. Willoughby is just a trifle eccentric. Nurse, you better start preparing the anesthetic. Doctor, uh, we better scrub up, old boy. Had uh, quite an interesting morning. Interesting talk with uh, Dr. Armour, conceited puppy, kept boasting he could perform an Oh, I'm sure you could. Of course I could, with one hand, too. By God, it's almost worth it. I changed my mind. I'm better. I want to go home. No, no, just relax. Look, I got to get out of here. Let me go. I just remembered I got an appointment. You're a lucky chap, my man. We're going to try a new type of anesthetic on you. Spinal injection. Wonderful stuff. Never been tried before. You'll be awake right through the operation. <laughs> awake? Will there be any pain? Oh, none to speak of. Oh, I don't want to. Give me ether. Come, come, a little pain never hurt anybody. I want ether. I don't want any pain. I assure you there will be no pain. A little agony, yes, but no pain. See <laughs> the anesthetic, old boy. Yes, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Willoughby, would you like to use a new electric needle? Let me see it. Ah, oh, yes, that's it. Wonderful, Gary. <laughs> well, we're just ready for work now. Off to work I go. Yes, yes, yes. No! <laughs> There, that didn't hurt, did it? Oh. In a minute, you won't feel a thing below your chest. Scalpel, nurse. Just a minute. There aren't enough sterile towels here. I prepared the usual amount, doctor. Well, prepare some more. I expect quite a mess. Yes, oh, ma'am. Right, oh, man. <laughs> mess? Pass me a needle. I want to test the degree of anesthetization. No! <laughs> oh, he's ready. Now, observe closely, doctor. First, we cut a lateral incision parallel to the dorsal. Dorsal aorta, like this. Now, in doing this, you must be very careful not to cut the carotid artery, which is right here, which is right there, which is, uh... Oh, well, it's around there someplace. <laughs> Next, we make a longitudinal incision, 10 inches long, at right angles to the lateral incision, which is 20 inches long. There we are. Ghastly, isn't it? <laughs> Always remember, Doctor, this is a very delicate type of incision and should be used only in cases of kidney trouble. Oh, but, Doctor, this is a gallbladder case. Oh, 
So it is, so it is. Oh. Don't worry, my man, you still have a chance. Oh, but doctor, don't now, you... Now, let me see, where were we? Ah, yes, we had just made an incision in the left lung. Now we do the right. But doctor, <laughs> it's a gallbladder case. Oh, so it is, so it is. Observe closely, doctor. First, we cut through the anterior abdominal muscles, and what do we find? The posterior abdominal muscles. We cut through those, severing the ligamental cords, and we, uh... Hello. What's this I'm cutting here? I don't seem to recognize it. Oh, it's just the spinal cord. Oh. Now, by stripping the periosteum and raising the flap, we find what, doctor? The gallbladder. Correct. And here it is. Here it... That's strange. It's not there. Exactly. Just what are you trying to pull here? Oh, what do you mean? I don't know what... Don't come out with it. Don't lie. Where's your gallbladder? Yeah, but doctor... Oh, don't worry. I'll walk you around here someplace. Oh, here it is, Doctor. Here is the root of all the trouble. Not at all, eh? Well, just a matter of mopping up. Doctor Willoughby, may I say that in all my knowledge of medical history, I have never witnessed a more exciting, a more complete, a more incredible operation than you have just performed. Bravo, bravo. Thank you very much. And now... For my encore, I shall blindfold it. No, no, you don't! <laughs> Not now, not now. Go away. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, the scene you have just witnessed, well, takes place whenever the public recognizes a great celebrity. But I wonder how many of us realize the work, the planning, the genius that goes behind into creating a great movie star. Let me tell you the case of Mike Schlemp. Our story begins with the digging of the foundation for a new skyscraper. Mike? Yeah. How many feet you got to go? I got about five feet here. Okay. Boy, it's hot today. Boy, is it hot today. As if by fate, a long, black, sleek limousine with a California license plate pulls over to the curb. A man gets out. Oh, that'll be all for today, James. I, I think I'll take a little walk. Bye-bye. That's him! That's just the type I'm looking for! That's the man! Young man! Young man! Me? Yes, you! What? I want to talk to you! Stop, turn that thing off. I want to talk to you. Okay. What do you want? <laughs> I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Charles Black, head talent scout for Cosmic Productions. How would you like to become a movie star? Boy, it's hot today. <laughs> no, while well, you turn that thing off, now I tell you I'm the greatest talent scout in the world. And if I tell you that you become a great movie star, you can believe me. So? So! So it means you'll be famous. You'll get fan mail from all over the world. You'll be a world famous celebrity. Okay, I'll go wait. You'll have a beautiful house with a swimming pool with, with, a, with, a, with a tennis court. Okay, I'll go wait. You'll have a, a car with chauffeurs, with servants. Okay, I'm gonna wait. You'll have plenty of money, the finest foods, the finest clothes. Okay, mister, I'm good. I'm good. I'll go with you. All aboard! <laughs> Mike, I want you to meet Mr. David Farley, head of Cosmic Productions. DF, I want you to meet our new discovery, Mike Schlemp. Mike, how are you, my boy? I want you to just feel right at home here, make yourself one of the family of Cosmic Productions. And now a little formality, the contract. I want to be very fair with you, so I'm going to read it to you. Yes. It says uh, here, insofar... So far as the part of the first part and part of the second part, so as a so as the party of Cosmic Production is under no obligation at any time whatsoever. So and 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 so Cosmic Production is so and so and so and according to all disasters such as earthquakes, fire, destruction, your fault and so and so and so and so etc. So now we come to the party of the second part, one so-called alleged actor, Mike Schlemp. So Mike Schlemp is sold down the river or so and 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 so and
so on, body and soul, and so on, so on, so on, slavery, and so on, so on. Forever, sign here. <laughs> You'll be a great star. Yes. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, take him through the studio and get him started. Take him right through. All right, make him. All right, how am I going to take his hair? Take his hair this way. All right, I got to take his hair that way. I got to take his hair. I'll push his hair this way. Now I got to, I got to shave it all off over here and put it on top here. No, I got to make a part this way. Now I got to, I shave it all off. Give him a wig. That's it. How about the thing over here? I got his eyebrow. I got an idea. Give him one long eyebrow. That's a good one. How about his mouth? Think about the light one. Look over here. Look over there. No, put no pants. I'll put it down there. I'll just talk like that. I will put the lips on there. How about his ears? Put it this way. Put it that way. All right, that's it. Leave it like that. How about his nose? Put it over here. No, put it back there. I got a good idea. Put his nose here. That's it. You'll be a great star. I've taken the diction. All right, see this. I love you. I love you. No, 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 no. I love you. Oh, I love you. Great. You'll be a great star. All right, take him away. All right, take him a wardrobe. All right, now listen. When you build him a suit, give him a little shoulder. A little more shoulder. I'll give him some shoulder. Give him a sh That's it. There's the shoulder. You'll be a great star. Take him to publicity. All right. Mike Schlemp. Mike Schlemp. I don't like the name. Mike Schlemp. Uh, Mike. Mike. That's a nice name. It's got an earthy feeling here, Mike. But I don't like that Schlemp. Mike. I got it. Mike Schlump. That's it. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Jim, listen, drop everything. I want you to start a new press campaign and make the whole country Mike Schlump conscious. You got that? Right. You'll be a great star. All right, Charlie, take him down to the commissary and introduce him to a few people. Mike, I'm in the commissary now. I want you to meet a few of the people around here. Clark, Clark, can I see you for a moment? Thank you. Come right over here. Clark, this is Mark Schlump, a new uh, discovery of ours. Mike, Mr. Clark Gable. How do you do, Mr. Gable? Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And good luck to you, too, sir. Thank you, sir. And now, Mark, I want... Lana, Lana, will you come over here just for a second? Lana, Lana, I want you to meet a new addition to the family. Mike Schlump, Mike, Lana Turner. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Turner? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. And good luck to you too, sir. I mean, ma'am. Ah, uh, honey. Ah, uh, sir. I mean, uh, good luck to you. And now, Mike, I want you to meet our biggest money maker. Shake hands. Gee, I, I never thought I'd meet you. How do you do? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck to you too. All right, on the set. Everybody on the set now. All right, now. Mike, this is your big scene. I want you to, want you to do it good. You can do it. You'll be a great star. All right, lights, camera, sound, action. Uh... Mary, uh, yeah, yeah, Mary, Mary, uh, I'll tell you now that, um, uh, that uh, we are, we, something wrong with our love. That's it, yeah, love. And uh, we uh, say now that we must learn to uh, accept, uh, accept, uh, uh, it, it, that's it. Cut! Mike! Mike! Great. <laughs> Picture is a smash hit. Mike Schlump is now an international star. The new Mike Schlump comes to work on the lot. Hi, Clark. Lana, sit down, baby. I don't want your seats. Will you sit down there, honey? DF! Over here. Light the cigar. Now, listen, about my new picture. I mean the script. I mean, after all, Eugene O'Neill, Morse Hart, Shakespeare. Get me some writers. What do you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, and listen, I'm very unhappy around here because that 5,000 a week, that's, that's peanuts. And besides, I got some offers from other production companies, my own production company, and uh, so let's say that uh, it's either going to be my way around here or else. Ha-ha! <laughs> Ho-ho, it's hot today! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in Hollywood, in front of the world-famous Cathay Circle Theater, where we are about to witness one of its greatest premieres. Listen, listen, listen for the film no one's gonna miss from that fabulous great metropolis, Hollywood and Cal Hollywood, the cow colossal booming, assuming town neath the sky. So get up, get up, get up off your back, drive your Cadillac to the premiere and thrill your cardiac. It's a story, the most notorious plot that's ever come by. 
It's the most uniquest and the sure to be the freakest jet. It's so new and different that the story isn't written yet. There are thrills and chills galore, all star cast and many more. Proclamated and adored, nominated to award. An Oscar for the most unique picture of the century. It's a plot that cannot fall cause it's the newest story ever told. Paradox Pictures present. Paradox Pictures proudly present Heartburn. A lonely detective named Bo was called on by a shy girl named Flo, and something snapped inside Flo, and also Bo. There's something different about this girl. What's the case? It seems her boyfriend Joe had robbed a bank for dough, but he was killed by someone she wants to know. No time to waste, he got the case. He rushes to the bank where the job took place. He goes right in to see the sin. Because you know without a mo they can't begin. And says Mo. This must be Joe. No one move. You too, Joe. And then says Mo. Get me the police! They search for any evidence to be at large. The coppers cry and sing the blues. For all the smoke could drive the turn to find the blues. But not our mo. But not our mo. But not our mo. Back to his death goes Mo. To pay off Mo if Mo can tell her who killed Joe. Mo stands up and says he knows the killer of her handsome bow. Flo pays off the dough to Mo and Mo says thanks and takes the dough. Then Flo asks the question, who? Who killed Joe and Mo says you. So Flo says it's you I killed him for and I don't love Joe
you this girl was different. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the picture is over, but the glamour of the evening has just begun because the celebrities are leaving the theater and we're going to have a few of them step up to the microphone and say a few words. And first I see approaching Miss Imogene Coker. Miss Coker, would you tell us what you thought of the picture tonight? It was sad. Paradox films are always sad. And I'm sure that this one was a real tragedy. Thank you very much, Miss Coker. And next, ladies and gentlemen, I see Miss Mary McCarty. Miss McCarty, what did you think of the picture tonight? Oh, really? Well, may we quote you on that? <laughs> Thank you, Miss McCarty. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a rare treat. The stars of Heartburn, Marge and Gower Champion. Tell us, Champion, how did you feel about this picture tonight? We're very, very happy, happy to, to be, be here. here. Thank you very much, Marge and Gower Champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of the Admiral Broadway Review, Mr. Sid Caesar. Sid? <laughs> Say a few words about the picture, would you, Sid? Boy, it's hot today. <laughs> Thank you, Sid Caesar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a guest that I know you'll be interested to hear from, Mr. Milton Burrow. for your very wonderful applause. I admire your taste. It, uh, <laughs> it is really, I heard that remark, lady. <laughs> You're wrong, Gregory Peck is taller than I am. It is really, it is really, that man, your head is shining right in my eyes. <laughs> for a minute, I thought you were sitting upside down, but. It, 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 now this is really the truth. It is really wonderful to see so many people here at this very wonderful, wonderful opening. And I was in pictures myself. I made two pictures, one like this, one like this. <laughs> <laughs> and a young man's joke. But this is really, this is really wonderful. I have starved, uh, starred in many pictures <laughs> before. I'm getting fat now, I'm not kidding. I just took on my money belt, you see. <laughs> But I, uh, I have always watched the Admiral television show every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And I... <laughs> but I love, I love uh, uh, Mary McCarthy, Imogene Coker, and uh, Gower and Champion, and all the kids, and, uh, and uh, uh, the other fellow, I don't remember his name. <laughs> but I did not come here to bury Caesar. I came here to praise him. <laughs> this... Uh, no, no. We got some audience here. You know, last Tuesday night at our show, we had an audience laugh. I thought they never start. But this audience <laughs> is, is really a wonderful, wonderful crowd. And I want to tell you that uh, the, the, this picture, Heartburn, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It was all a gag. You know what I mean? But that's the reason that I'm here is to talk about some other picture, ladies and gentlemen, seriously for a moment. And that's the picture of health. Here in America, we are very, very concerned about our great health, not only here in America, but all over the world. From this theater tomorrow, starting at 12 noon over the NBC network, over WNBT in New York and the Eastern area, WNBT meaning why not by Texaco. <laughs> the, mm. <laughs> we are going to do a 24 hour marathon television show right from this very gorgeous theater. I will be on the television cameras for 24 consecutive hours. We'll have so many celebrities, notables here to uh, speak to you and entertain you. And it is all for the Damon Runyon Memorial Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, be with us tomorrow, starting at 12 o'clock, and watch us throughout the entire day and, and night. And I'll be very, very happy to accept all your contributions. And thank you very, very much. This is a great thing, this television. This is the only medium in the world where you can reach millions of people who luckily can't reach you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Oh, no.
told us that we're nearly through. We hope we made a little bit of Broadway zoom. Right over the footlights and into your room. Your Admiral Dealer extends a fond invitation to his friends. Be with us again same time, same we'll channel next Friday no night when your Admiral Dealer, the man to see for dual-temp refrigerators, electric ranges, radios, record players, and magic mirror television, brings you another star-studded Admiral Broadway review.